Burgers, we've all made them, we've all eaten them. I'm gonna teach you how to make my favorite, but with a few twists. Let's get it. Burgers. 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 Isa Burger. Oh, I've got a brand new Combona Vista. Oh. First things first, we've got to slice up the vegetables. Onion. So take your onion in half, take the top and bottom off, and then when I peel the onion, I just take off the first layer as well. That first layer, when you're not cooking the onion down, can become a little bit chewy and a little bit tough. So always take that first layer off. Got the onion in half, and now we're going to be cutting through the grain through the circle so we get little semicircles of onion. This will denature the structure of the onion and help it break down with that pickle. If you cut with the grain, it's good for roasting, good for caramelizing, you don't get those little bits that burn. So when you slice the onion across, I'm using the knuckle of my middle finger to guide the blade and I'm pushing forward and dragging back. Then when you've got that side off, you can go back down to the bottom and just rock your knife through so you get the maximum amount of onion off the roof. Same again with the cabbage, engage your middle knuckle and slice through it. A cucumber. In half, and you just slice this on an angle. You don't have to go as thin with the cucumber because it's a bit of a softer vegetable. The pickle, the salt, the vinegar and the heat is going to break it down a lot quicker. So you can go a tiny bit thicker with it. We're going to put a little bit of spice in with this quick slaw and that's coming in the form of a jalapeno. Now jalapenos are fairly hot. They're more mild if you go to the big spice of things, but I'm a little bit um, French, let's say, when it comes to spice levels. So what we're gonna do is take the top off of the jalapeno, take it in half, and then take the membrane and the seeds out. Now the membrane is the hottest part of the chili. Some people think it's the seeds, but it's not. It's the white bit that holds the seeds in place. Put your jalapeno down to the board, flatten it with your knife, and then run your knife across the jalapeno and you take out all the seeds and the membrane. When you chop through peppers or chilies, you always have the skin down to the board. It just helps your knife rock through and you slice. So now that's all our vegetable slice. We're gonna start working on our pickle, our pickling liquor, white vinegar, salt, sugar, and water. We're gonna add the spices into the vegetables, mix those into the kilner jar, pour the liquor on top, leave it on the side and let it go to room temperature. If you want your slaw a little bit more crunchy and less cooked, you can put it straight in the fridge or you can do a cold pickle over about 12 hours. It's up to you. With a small saucepan on the heat, we're just gonna add the water first. White vinegar in. Add the sugar and the salt and then bring it up to the boil and that's gonna dissolve the sugar and the salt and also cook off the vinegar a tiny bit. Our pickle's coming up to the boil. We're gonna add some spices, fennel seed, coriander seed, onion seed, and a little bit of black pepper. First rule of cooking, never be scared to get your hands dirty. You want to mix this up, give it a good scrunch and a grind with your fingers. Basically looking to get those spices in pairs and mixed all through the vegetable. You get this out, stick it in your jar, work over your bowl so any stragglers fall back into the bowl and you can pick them up and stick them in your jar. You want to fill the jar right to the top because when that pickle goes in, you don't want any space for the vegetables to be able to flow. You want it encased in that hot pickle. Pour the hot pickle in and you're done. It can't take any more, Captain. So when you're marinating tomatoes, this can be for a tomato salad, this can be for your caprese salads, this can be for anything. Marinating tomatoes is an art form. You want to get some wet garlic or good quality garlic. Just take a cheek of that off and give it a slice. Stick that straight on your tray. It's best to work with stainless steel when you're doing tomatoes because the acidity of the tomato could affect, let's say, an aluminium tray, for example. You'll end up getting like a tinny metallic taste on the tomato because the acidity reacts with the aluminium and changes the flavor. You're looking for stainless steel whenever you're working with any sort of acidity, whether that's boiling vinegars, whether that's making beurre blancs, whether that's cutting tomatoes and putting them up on a tray. Oregano. We just crush it with a knife. Now our oregano and our garlic are onto the tray with a glug of good quality olive oil. Massage those aromats onto the tray. And then this is your little flavor bed in order to put your tiny tomatoes to sleep. Isle of Wight heirloom tomatoes. They're banging season and you can tell by the smell. Now tomatoes should never be put in the fridge. 
these things are alive. As soon as you put them into the fridge, you kill the perfume of a tomato. They should be left on your windowsill or in a basket altogether. They're perfect. And when you're cutting tomatoes, you need a razor sharp knife. You engage with the skin and then you rock forward and back to slice through the tomato. And we just want some half centimetre slices. Now with tomato slices, just get them onto the tray. And you just want to marinade and cover the tomatoes with that stunning aromatic oil. Now just to bring these up to a VIP status, we're going to sprinkle a tiny bit of sugar on them. Now the sugar will just help the natural sweetness of the tomato come out and also a tiny bit of salt. Macerated and marinated, we're going to stick these to one side, start with our bacon jam. I've gone for streaky bacon here, unsmoked, from the butcher, nice and thick. If you get it from the supermarket, it can be okay, but you're more likely to get that water that comes out of it, and sticks to everything and burns. You want to get good quality bacon from the butcher for this recipe. So preheat your pan for this, you want it on medium heat. I'm going to take the bacon in one slab and just slice through it. You want to chop this up fairly small because it's going to turn into a jammy-esque type consistency. If you've got big long bits of bacon in there, it's just not going to be the right thing. Get the bacon into the pan on medium heat. That's going to start rendering the fat. The fat's going to come out of the bacon. It's going to be a vehicle for the heat to crisp up that bacon and get the mild reaction working in there with the protein. So when the bacon goes in, you should hear that sizzle straight away. And that's telling you the pan is at a perfect temperature. So this is wooden spoon cooking. What's wooden spoon cooking? Curries, bolognese, long braises, stews, jams. This is wooden spoon cooking. Home cooking, you've got one spoon, it carries up the flavour from all of it and just makes it better. The wand of the home kitchen. <laughs> so as my old mentor Raymond Blanc says, when you're caramelising slowly, you look for a happy sound. The smell and the noise. These are things you listen for as you're cooking. You don't want it too aggressive, but you don't want it boiling either. That happy, consistent sizzle is what you're looking for, and that is control of temperature in the pan. What is a jam? It's a reduction, it's a preserve. We're using bacon here as our fruit. We've got coffee, Coca-Cola, brown sugar, and maple syrup. These are all sweet elements. The sugar is gonna help preserve the bacon over time. The coffee is gonna bring bitterness. You've got the meaty sweetness from the caramelized bacon all reduced down to go on top of a burger. Sea Lavana Smanan. Never rush your bacon when you're caramelizing it. It's a slow affair. You want the fat to render out and the bacon to become crispy. You don't want burnt bits and flabby bits, because that's something else in time. To save that for Benador. The bacon's caramelized in there now. It's beautiful, it's dark, it's golden brown. We've added a little bit of brown sugar and we're gonna caramelize that as well. So you get two hits of sugar two layers and that brings that molasses -y type bacon jam that we're looking for. We're going to go in with some maple syrup, coca-cola and the coffee goes in. Reduce it down. We're going to hit it with a good bit of salt just to cut through that sweetness and a touch of pepper. This is going to reduce down now for about 20 minutes. We want it really thick and tarry but be careful not to burn it when you get to those finishing stages. What we're going to do in the meantime is make our burgers. We've got 20% fat ground beef. You can use aged beef if you like. If you want to go Rolls Royce, best you can get, buy yourself some aged short ribs and then mince them at home yourself. They've got a perfect 20% fat content and they'll make an amazing burger. What we're going to do is split this block, 800 gram block, into four, roughly. So you're looking at about 200 gram burger, which is pretty decent, I would say. So you press those down in your hands. Don't be too precious about it. And you want to make a nice flat patty. Bang a little bit of salt and pepper on each side. And we're just going to leave these out for about 20 minutes before we roast them. That will help bring the meat up to room temperature. So when you're cooking meat, you want it starting at room temperature. If you start the meat cold, the inside of it is going to be fridge cold. And the outside, you're going to be trying to attack it with this aggressive heat. You can get grey lines around the outside of your meat. So what you want to do is take it out 25, 30 minutes before you cook it. Leave it on the side. And you're not going to get that grey line. It's going to be an, a, a, a kinder temperature to bring up to wherever you want it to be. Our bacon jam has been coming down for about 20 minutes. You just want to give it a good stir at the end. It will start to bubble. It will almost look like foam and butter. And that's where the sugar is reducing and, and turning into that thick caramel. So this is where you need to be really careful not to burn. So once we're at that jammy consistency, just get it straight out into a bowl. So our quickles are done. 
our burgers are made, our jam is just cooling down, and our tomatoes are macerated. Now we're working on the Rolls Royce of burger sauces. Take a good handful of your quickles, drain them out and chop them through. Want these chopped up pretty fine. Once they're all chopped up, straight into a bowl. Now, burger sauce. Burger sauce is basically made up of three main components. That's this one, this one, and this one. I can't tell you who they are, because we're not sponsored yet. So the general ratio is two parts of this one, one part of this one, and one part of this one. Now for a good burger sauce, I always go garlic powder, good amount of black pepper, smoked paprika, and the secret ingredient, is secret, Shh. dried dill. Once all that's in, just give it a good stir. I'm telling you, this burger sauce will change your life. The addition of dill, smoky paprika, and your homemade pickles, just give it that elevation. The jam's just cooling down now. You wanna stir it as it's cooling down because you need the fat and the sugar to emulsify it to become just sticky, bacony goodness. We're just gonna to toast off the buns. If you want a good wedge of butter, just bring that up to foam it. Buns in. We're just gonna to toast those to the golden brown. <laughs> now we're coming to the finishing stages of cooking this burger. We're gonna get some of the quickles out to drain. These have just softened, still got a little bit of crunch in them. Beautiful and spiced, great seasoning with that salt and sugar. We've got our seasoned patties here. All we're gonna do is put a tiny bit of sunflower oil in that pan, bring it up to smoking hot and get the burgers in. When you put the burger in, lay it away for you. Now you want smoke, you want heat, and you want aggressive sounds when you're cooking these burgers. You're searing them to create a crust. There's two major crimes in this life, murder and overcooking burgers. You wanna sear it for one minute, flip it over, sear it for another minute, put your cheese on top, a splash of water, and then get a lid on. So now the burgers are cooked, the cheese is steamed over the top. You wanna to take them out of that pan and rest them on your board. So buns down, beautifully toasted and golden brown. We're gonna add sauce to the top and the bottom. Burger on. A little bit of that bacon jam. That slice of perfectly macerated and marinated tomato. And we finish with our quickle slaw. And put your buns on top and you're good to go. Exactly how I like to cook a burger. We've got the quickles, the cheese, the bacon jam, the macerated tomato. Absolutely beautiful.